Hello lovely butterfly, welcome to this channel on Monday, week 186. Hello lovely butterfly, welcome back to my channel, it's France. For today's journal on Monday, I decided to go for my regular journal on Monday art channel and I took out two mediums to start with. The first one is the light molding paste from Golden. And as I felt like going with a very organic uh, way, I just scraped it on with my palette knife, no stencil, just applying irregular patches of molding paste on the paper. I like how once it dries, how it makes the paper feel. It gives like this hmm, softy feeling to the paper. It makes the paper less rigid, actually. As soon as it was dry enough, or actually I should say, as soon as I ran out of patience, I went in with the gesso and I did the exact same thing, just applying it in patches here and there so that I would have some kind of resist when moving on. And yes, the molding paste could have done with a bit more drying time. For my first layers of color, I'm going in with Fresco Finish from Paper Artsy and I will um, list all the colors that I'm using in the description of this video so that you can look it up there. I'm starting from the center, working my way to the edges and then going in with a baby wipe to blend it instead of just um, applying it. And you can already see what the gesso is doing. It's resisting the paint more than the molding paste actually is. Now I'm just repeating the steps with a lighter color of green, which is from the same family as the first color of green, doing it in the exact same way, just building up the layers. To intensify the colors without making them like really, really stand out, I'm going in with some Lindy's Gang Spray Ink, again with some green, and I'm doing the exact same thing. I'm going in with a baby wipe and then spreading it, lifting it, just to keep it as organic as possible on the paper. And then again, this time with a different color of the Lindy's Gang. This will also add a little bit of shine to the paper, just, just very, very slightly. I wanted to make sure once this was done that it was really, really dry because I wanted to go in with my Distress inks and I didn't want it to mix up with the greens um, too fast. It will later on, but not just yet. So I'm mixing up two colors of the Distress inks. I'm using the Vintage Photo One and the Walnut Stain and this warm edge around the spread will give me a nice counterbalance to the cold green that I have in the center. And to give it a little bit of a dramatic feel, I'm also adding a bit of black. Now, I could leave it like this, but What's the fun of that? Of course, I'm going in with some water. This is distress ink. And when you mix it with water, that's when it starts to sing. And that's when it also gets a little bit of contamination from the green that's underneath because that's water reactive too. I'm adding rusted splatters to my spread by using the Red Hot Poker Orange Lindy's Gang. 
but I'm not drying it completely. Once that it's starting to dry, I'm already lifting it up so that I only have like hinges of splatters. These are the new stamps. <laughs> I'm starting with this new honeycomb one, which has a really um, chicken wire feel to it. Um, and again, I'm using the same distress inks that I used to do the edge around the spread. For the second stamp, I'm using this one, which is actually interesting because you can align this one in two different, different ways. You can either go with the wonky line or with the straight line. Well, depending on how you hold it. This time I want my circles to be straight because that's what I want to focus on. So I'm aligning with the three um, little circles. Just adding stuff to the background to make the spread more interesting. Yet another one of the new stamps, of course, numbers, but these are big numbers. <laughs> I'm giving them their right to shine by stamping them with black instead of stamping them uh, with the distressing so that they really stand out. And I don't want to do big numbers all over, so I co I'm combining them with my little numbers. I wanted to add a little bit more of movement to the distress edge that I have. So I sprayed some water on and then just blotted off uh, with a piece of kitchen roll. And of course, as I stamped my honeycomb using distress ink, well, it's moving too, but that's okay. It will move even more further on. Again, one of the new stamps. This is one of the Natural Beauty stamp set and I'm stamping it with uh, Distress ink. I was going to say archival ink. I'm so used to stamp with archival ink, but I wanted to be able to play with water later on. So I stamped it with Distress ink Black Suit. And to intensify the blackness of it, I'm going in with my um, charcoal pencil, which is water soluble. This pencil is really, um, it's, it's the bomb. It's like super, super soft uh, charcoal. So you can really Oh, it's it's it just smears on the paper with so much love <laughs> um and then i'm going in with the water to blend everything together and to really have like that blackness going on because i know that there was there will be more coming on top of it so i really want this to stand out but i don't want this to be this regular shape so i'm going in with a charcoal pencil and giving it lots and lots of shade um around the flower
I wanted to have some lines going on on the spread to draw the attention to the focal point that I will be adding later on, but I had some issues with my Unipin pens. I think they've had it with me mistreating them by using them on molding paste and gesso and well these are just well they just died on me so i did it with my charcoal pencil again just because i love it so much and then because i could blend it again and play around with the black shade that i can add on the spread These two mini tiny little things are two of the new stamps as well. They're also part of the Natural Beauty stamp set. And <laughs> like the numbers, you, you're going to see these everywhere <laughs> because, well, little circles. I mean, like, I cannot not use them. <laughs> little circles. Um, I'm just stamping them with archival ink. I want to make sure that they don't move any further despite what it is I might do on the paper. Now, this was the frustrating part because I wanted to play with my white Posca pens, but they're empty. I've been making so many white splatters using these that I just, well, they're empty. I need to refill them, but I don't have what I need to refill them. So I tried to get out whatever it is I could still get out of them. Um, I wanted to add to that black line that I have also some, some highlight to really play with the black and white contrast here and also blend it just like I did with the black line. Doing this, I realized that it might be time to just go back to paint to add splatters instead of always doing it with my Posca pen. So I took out the black and white fresco finish, which is the little black dress one and the snowflake one. Added a little bit of, of added a little bit of water. I'm I'm getting ahead of myself here. Added a little bit of water and then just use those to splatter using a paintbrush. It's not because that the new stamps have arrived that the old stamps don't deserve some love anymore. So I took out one of the London, New York stamp set stamps, um, scribbled on some new color, the rusty color one, sprayed some water on it and then used that to stamp so that I would have like that rust coming from the edge from the paper coming more into the paper. I felt like introducing more white into the spread to tone it down just a little bit. So I took out my warp grit stencil, my snowflake fresco finish, and then just dabbed it on here and there. But again, I was getting frustrated because it was too little wide in too little areas and I wanted it to be more wide. So I just took my palette knife and then scraped on the white directly onto the paper. Some days I know exactly what it is I want to say on the spread and some days my stickers tell me. So that's when I'm actually listening to my soul. Um, in journaling, this is a thing, soul journaling. So I consider this to be my soul journaling. It's my soul telling me what the words are, um, well, which words are needed on this spread. And then to give my uh, word sticker 
uh, a finishing touch that would work with the spread, I colorized it using two matching colors in the new color. It was time to add my second line that would lead the eye to the focal point, and to do so I did it with my sewing machine just by running the paper straight through it. For this spread, I really wanted all the pieces of thread to be on the spread that I'm working on. So as the thread didn't want to come to the front, I could pull whatever I wanted. There must have been a knot somewhere. It didn't want to come to the front. So then I just stick it through a needle and bring it back um, sewing wise to the right side of the paper so that I can make a little knot and then have it stay there. And then at the bottom, I left all the exceeding thread as a little extra on the paper because that is where I want my focal point to come. And my focal point is going to be a piece of rusted cambric. So this one has just been colorized with the Red Hot Poker Orange um, Lindy's Gang, which I've said it a couple of times is my current new favorite. <laughs> I took out a rusted washer and then one of my little hearts that I colorized to uh, match the spread and to go into the little washer. Now I can just glue everything down and I'm using um, soft matte gel in my precision bottle and someone asked after the previous video if it's just soft matte gel in this bottle it's just soft matte gel and it could do with just a tiny bit of water to make it easier to get out of the bottle the nozzle is just a little bit too tight for this thickness of um, soft matte gel so I just adapt in function of what I need now I can glue my little heart in place if you want to know how I make my little hearts, that is a little secret that I share in my in-person workshops. That is one of the few secrets that I keep for there. <laughs> That's it for today's spread. I hope you liked it. If so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. A huge thank you to my patrons without whom this video would not have happened again. I'll see you back here next time. Don't forget to put down a layer a day. Butterfly kisses.